In the last video, we started to see how all of our rules of logic, the principle of universal generalization, the principle of existential generalization, and the principle of conditional proof can be nested within one another in order to prove fairly complicated looking statements. Continuing with that, let's prove a statement that looks really complicated. We're going to prove for all values of y in the real numbers, if for all values of x in the real numbers, if x is greater than 0, then y is less than or equal to x, then y is less than or equal to 0. Let's first try to figure out what this means. What this statement is saying is that for any value of y in the real numbers, a certain conditional statement is true. The antecedent of this conditional statement is itself a conditional statement. It says, for all values of x in the real numbers, if x is greater than 0, then y is less than or equal to x. This is describing a property of the number y. It's saying if y has the property that it is less than or equal to every positive real number. And the consequent is that y also has to be less than or equal to 0. In other words, if a real number y has the property that it's less than or equal to all of the positive numbers, then it automatically inherits the property that it's less than or equal to zero as well. Let's try to prove this. Trusting in our principles of logic, we can notice that the statement begins with a universal quantifier for all values of y in the real numbers. This means we need to introduce an arbitrary constant y into our proof. Next, we see that the statement we need to demonstrate for this value of y is a conditional statement. It's a conditional statement with a fairly complicated antecedent, but it's still a conditional statement. This means we can use either a direct proof, a proof by contraposition, or a proof by contradiction. Let's just have a look at what a proof by contraposition would look like. Let's try to write down the contrapositive form of this complicated conditional statement. Remember that the contrapositive form says if the consequent is false, so in other words, if the negation of the consequent, then the antecedent is false, so the negation of the antecedent. The negation of the consequent is fairly simple. The consequent is that y is less than or equal to 0, and so its negation is that y is greater than 0. The negation of the antecedent is a little bit more complicated, but it's still something we can do. The antecedent reads, for all values of x in the real numbers, if x is greater than 0, then y is less than or equal to x. The negation of this is, there is at least one value of x in the real numbers, for which this smaller conditional statement is false. Remember that the negation of a conditional statement is the antecedent and the negation of the consequent, so the negation of this would be x is greater than 0 and y is greater than x. So if we're going to prove this using a proof by contraposition, we would be proving the statement if y is greater than 0, then there is at least one value of x that is greater than 0 and less than y. In this form, it seems a little more reasonable to prove. Let's return to our proof. If we're going to prove this large conditional statement using a proof by contraposition, we begin by assuming the negation of the consequent. This means we make the assumption that 0 is less than y. We are then required to demonstrate the negation of the antecedent. This means we have to come up with a demonstration of the statement there is at least one value of x for which 0 is less than x and x is less than y. If we can successfully demonstrate this, then the principle of conditional proof will allow us to conclude if y is greater than 0, then there is at least one value of x in the real numbers for which 0 is less than x and x is less than y. We can then conclude that this statement also holds in its contrapositive form, which is if for all x in the real numbers, if x is greater than 0, then y is less than or equal to x, then y is less than or equal to 0. And of course, since y is an arbitrary real number, the principle of universal generalization will allow us to conclude that this is true for all values of y. Now, looking at the statement that we need to demonstrate, it says, for at least one value of x in the real numbers, 0 is less than x, and x is less than y. Since this is a statement with an existential quantifier, we're going to need to use the principle of existential generalization. This means we have to assign a specific value of x. And so we need a statement that says, let x equal something specific. The question is, what value can we assign to x that will make this statement hold? Let's get out a scrap piece of paper. The assumption we've made so far is that y is greater than 0, which, if we look at the real numbers as a number line, looks something like this. We have 0 here, and we have y over here. 
What we're trying to do is come up with a specific value we can assign to x that will make two inequalities hold. We need x to be greater than zero, and we need x to be less than y. That means the value we need to assign to x has to be somewhere in this region here. One simple idea would be to assign x to be the value that's halfway between zero and y, which is y over two. Let's return to our proof. Letting x equal the specific value y over two, we now have a clear direction that we need to go in. We have to demonstrate that this specific value of x is both greater than zero and less than y. In other words, we need to demonstrate that y over two is both greater than zero and less than y. To work out these demonstrations, let's go back to our scrap paper. The demonstration that y over two is larger than zero is fairly simple. We already have in our assumption that y is greater than zero, and so all we need to do is multiply both sides by the inverse of two. And since the inverse of two is positive, we know from axiom 04 that the order of the inequality will not be changed. The second inequality we need to demonstrate is that y over two is less than y. To figure out how to demonstrate this, let's try working backwards on our scrap paper. If we had the inequality y over two is less than y, we could multiply both sides by two, and that would give us y is less than two y. Seeing that we have y's on both sides, we might try to cancel these out, and that would give us zero is less than y. And we recognize that as being our assumption. This means we can come up with a demonstration of this simply by working this backwards. Starting from our assumption, zero is less than y, we can add y to both sides, giving us y is less than two y, and we can then multiply both sides by two inverse, giving us y over two, which is our assigned value of x on the left-hand side, and simply y on the right-hand side. Since these demonstrations seem to work, let's return to our proof. At this point in our proof, we have an arbitrary y in the real numbers, and we've made the assumption that y is greater than zero. We've also assigned a specific value to x, that being y over two, or y times two inverse. From here, we need to demonstrate that this specific value of x is both greater than zero and smaller than y. Using the work that we did on our scrap paper, we know that if we start with the assumption that zero is less than y, we can, on the one hand, simply multiply both sides by two inverse. We then get two inverse times zero is less than two inverse times y. And two inverse times zero is zero, while two inverse times y is our assigned value of x. On the other hand, starting with the assumption zero is less than y, we can add y to both sides, giving us y is less than two y, and then multiply both sides of that by two inverse. This gives us two inverse times y on the left, and simply y on the right. 2 inverse times y is, of course, our assigned value of x, and so we have the inequality x is less than y. We've now demonstrated for this assigned value of x that x is both greater than zero and less than y. Since x was assigned a specific value, the principle of existential generalization allows us to conclude that there is at least one value of x for which these inequalities hold. Since this was done under the assumption that y was greater than zero, the principle of conditional proof allows us to conclude if y is greater than zero, then there will be at least one value of x for which these inequalities hold. Now simply writing this conditional statement in its contrapositive form gives us the conditional statement that we're trying to prove. If for all values of x in the real numbers, if x is greater than zero, then y is less than or equal to x, then y is less than or equal to zero. And finally, since all of this was done for an arbitrary value of y, we can conclude that this is true for all values of y.